So for the next several weeks, we're going to be looking at some of the Psalms. We're going to be learning what 3,000 year old words can teach us about ourselves and about God. Many of the Psalms are songs. Some are worship litanies and poems or lyrics. They were written in lyrical verse because when you put words to music or rhyme, they are easy to remember. You know that. You know that from the songs that you can remember. It is in the Psalms that some of the most ancient and sacred teachings of our faith can be found. This particular song is lyrical. The words were put to music and they were used in a worship service. This Psalm, today's Psalm, is Psalm 139. It's a, it's a famous one. You have searched me and know my ways. Where can I go from your love? I am fearfully and wonderfully made. All of these great Bible verses are in this one Psalm. They are great sayings. It's a great Psalm of praise to God for what he's done and what he's going to do. It is a song of praise for what God has done and it's foundational in our theology. You know, the events of the past few weeks have shown us that people really aren't that good. Isn't that true? We don't behave well when we disagree. We are selfish. We seek revenge. We seek payback. We are short on forgiveness and reconciliation and healing. We human beings seek opportunity in crisis and we take advantage of our opponents in their weakness. We are slow to forgive, particularly when somebody is ignorant or confused or believe in misinformation. This is not the way of God. But it seems more and more that this is the way of the world. And frankly, these are desperate times. Psalm 139 speaks directly to our human nature. More accurately, it tells us who we are and whose we are. This psalm reminds us that we are God's people. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. That image is one that Martin Luther King Jr. used in his I Have a Dream speech, recognizing that all human beings are children of God and should not be divided by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. We, in fact, are God's people. He knows us. He created us. He will never abandon us. That's what this psalm teaches us. This is a foreign idea to many Americans because we are ruggedly independent. That's kind of our thing. It seems that after 2,000 years, the world still seems to stand still and look confused when it hears the good news of the gospel. The good news that you were created by a loving God who has not given up on you. The good news that, that you have a place in this world and a calling. You have something to do. Today the world has no idea why God or any being would create a world or a universe and allow us to live in it. And I think the reason for that is because we've screwed it up. Injustice. Injustice continues to be prevalent in our land. We don't fight for the preser preservation of truth. In fact, we just want to get our own way. People today think that this creation, our lives, and our society are really something that happened by accident. When confronted with the idea the idea of God or a heavenly being that controls this and has created this, people ask, why would God do such a thing? I mean, what's in it for God? 
that surely shows a misunderstanding of who God is. But they ask, why would God create a world and put us in it if we're just going to mess it up? Why would God do anything to help a world that people have damaged? Some people find the idea of God so unbelievable that they give up on their faith altogether. You see, deep down, we all know we're not perfect. We have failings, we have weaknesses. We've hurt one another. We've even had trouble taking care of ourselves and the world that God has given us. So why would God want us? It's almost too hard to believe that God would want us to work to make things better. It's particularly hard to believe that God would want to intervene on our behalf. After all we've done, we certainly don't deserve his grace. So sadly, we think that we can hide from God like Abraham in the garden. But the psalmist says no. God knows our inner thoughts. God is familiar with all our ways. He knows we're not perfect, and he loves us anyway. He knows we have messed us up, messed this up, but he loves us anyway. That is the definition of grace. God's unmerited favor. Grace is difficult to understand because it's not something we do or something we earn. Grace is an unmerited gift. And this gift of grace comes to us from God. You could see grace in the world today, particularly in our song. We are created by God, as is all of the world. We are known by God, and God is always with us, whether you believe it or not. We cannot hide from God. God goes before us and after us. He even goes with us when we're headed in the wrong direction. The psalmist knows this, and he's grateful. I think the grace and goodness of God is often seen in creation. We just are so caught up in ourselves that we fail to see it. But think about our world. In spite of the decay and death that's all around us, the pandemics and economic crisis, the sun still sets with majestic beauty regularly. And you can see it and you can feel its warmth. And that is a gift. Because if the world was just a few degrees different in its temperature, it wouldn't sustain life. But yet, by God's grace, his creation still exists. Even admit, uh, amidst social distancing and political upheaval, amidst lies and violence, you can still have a relationship that honors one another, that demonstrates goodness to others. Even with all the hatred and anger and division, you can still have a relationship with another person or other people, with neighbors, with family, with friends, that builds one another up because you're created that way. You are created to be in relationship. We have the ability to experience God's creation. We have the ability to love children, to teach others with examples of grace and kindness. We can give second chances. We can forgive people's wrongs. These are amazing things. And folks, this is how we were created. We didn't make this stuff up. God has God has demonstrated this stuff to us through his acts of grace. But even more so, these are acts that we now can undertake, modeling God's goodness and his love for the world. We have the ability to be gracious. And isn't that needed in this moment? The psalmist who, pe who penned this little 
Diddy, this little piece of music, was in awe of God because he knew as a writer and an artist the value of being able to experience all of creation and all that God has to offer. The writer knew that there is a world, a universe to be explored, and God is in it, and he is with us at every level. And as we experience our world, we can find goodness if we open our eyes and choose to be part of it. And so the psalmist in this psalm is amazed at God's graciousness, that he knows our inner thoughts and he still goes with us, that he surrounds us, that he endures the world that we've created in order to be with us. In experiencing God's world and God's grace, we learn and we fail and we succeed and we find grace along the way. Like the author, we should be grateful and we should show a little grace. Because right now, the world needs us to offer grace to our world to be forgiving people, to build relationships that are healthy and holy. The world needs us to be faithful Christians, setting an example of goodness and grace. The question is, are you up to the challenge? Let us pray. Thank you, God, that you have called us to be your people people of grace and goodness. Help us, God, to be faithful to that calling. We pray this in Christ's name.